place. And behind them comes a grieving mother. She's a widow. She's lost everything. She has nobody. It's her only son. She's, she's more than likely not an older woman because he's a young man. She's, she's maybe in her 40s, 50s. I don't know. But she's fully capable of carrying herself. But she has a few friends. That's all she has in this world to hold her by her hands and carry her because of her weakened state because she's crying and weeping. So she follows after the possession. She's crying. She's lost everything in the world. No children, no family, no husband. I don't have anything. And who knows? She might have just lost her husband a few months earlier. Who knows? Supported only by a few friends. Behind her comes right along the professional mourners. These people are hired to, to cry and to weep and to veil and to lament the death of this young man. And all of the fine funeral arrangements had been made. Everything was in place. Everything was in, in order. The wake or the visitation, as some call it, was over. The nice flowers had been delivered. The phone calls had been made. The hugs and the kind words. And, 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 and during those times from strangers and non-strangers alike, all of this, had this, this roller coaster of emotions, up and down, up and down, People come, they're crying, they get you, you regain your composure the next. People come and they start crying. This, I've kind of put my little mix in on it. And the next step is to get to the funeral. I mean, get to the cemetery and bury this young man. We're going to make it to the cemetery. We're, we're in the funeral possession. The White County cops are out front with their lights on, leading the hearses behind them. The preacher's got his nice tie on, his little suit, his buttoned up real tight, and he's behind them. And people are all with their lights on, all down through there. They're following across town, and everybody that's going to work that day has to stop. Because this young man is being carried out to, to, by the funeral possession to his final resting place. And Jesus comes along and ruins this, this funeral. Jesus comes along and He has a way of ruining the funeral. This is the one we're talking about. He comes along. They're well planned. They're more than likely spent some money on the funeral. This thing had been laid out. We've planned this. We have got everything in order. And Jesus comes along. And what they saw as a dead son, Jesus saw as a dead son rising. Amen. What they saw as a dead man, Jesus saw as a dead man rising. Let's come back to this in just a little bit. We're going to come back to this funeral, but let's jump ahead to another funeral. Let's jump ahead to one more funeral. This one, I mean, this is the funeral of all funerals. This is probably one of the most popular funerals in the history of mankind. John chapter 11, verse 11, this guy named Lazarus has died. Let's look at John chapter 11. A little different scenario. They've already had the funeral. Jesus wasn't even there. They buried the guy and they put him in the ground. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, this is Jesus speaking. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going to go wake him up. I'm going to go wake this guy up. The funeral was complete. It's finished. This is all time classic funeral. We all, if you don't know the story, go to John chapter 11 and read it. The funeral is over. The mourners are finished. The stone has been rolled. It would be like us standing there saying, we, we spent the night at the, at the funeral home. We spent the night at the church. We, 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 we followed the hearse. We put the, the body in the ground. And we watched them put the, the dirt in shovel full after shovel full and mound it up. And we watched them take the tent down in the rain. We watched all of that happen. We watched all of those occurrences. And I saw it. I saw the body. I, I saw the, the body being prepared with spices, they said. I, they held the funeral and they closed the tomb. And what they saw... What they saw was a dead man, a dead friend behind a heavy stone. What Jesus saw was a dead man rising. Jesus walks up and says, this ain't like what you think it's like. When we look at situations, when we look at situations, they're not like what we think they're like. God don't picture things the way we picture things. 
God don't see things the way we see things. I promise you, when you've had a funeral and you have closed the door and you've put the 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 the, the dirt on top of the the casket or rolled the, the, the stone over the tomb uh, over the tomb in, 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 in any case, whatever you do, when it's it's said and done and you're finished, you know what you say to yourself? Let's go home and let's find our new normal. I tell people that a lot. Now we've got to find a new normal. Let's go home and let's find our new normal because it is what it is. But Jesus walks up and says, this ain't what it ain't. <laughs> you say it is what it is, I say it ain't what it ain't. I see a, I see a dead man rising is what I see. You see a dead man in the tomb. I see a dead man rising. Let's jump ahead. Let's look at another, another uh, a funeral. Luke chapter 8, verse 41 and 42. I'm going to look at this real fast. Then a man named Jairus, he's a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house. Verse 42, because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was a, uh, she was dying, and Jesus was on his way, and the crowds almost crushed him in. He's come, he's a ruler of the synagogue, a, one of the rulers of the synagogue, comes to Jesus, the one known as the blasphemer, and comes and throws himself at his feet and says, Oh, Master, please save my daughter. Please heal my daughter. With everything that's in me, give me a healing today. I need a healing. And Jesus begins to start being pushed and thronged about and moved away by the crowds. And during this time, here comes this woman. She's, she's had an issue with, a, with blood and bleeding for, for, for years. And here she comes in sick and she needs something badly. She reaches in and she grabs a hold of Jesus and Jesus says, whoa, whoa, now wait a minute. And this is kind of the way it goes. She reaches in with everything that she has. She pushes in, gets stepped on, reaches out with everything she has and touches him and bam! She's healed just like, pop, just like that. Man, she's healed immediately. And Jesus says, wait a minute, somebody's touched me. We, we, I know I'm going to re-preach this one from a few weeks, months back. But somebody's touched me. Everybody's touching you. People are pushing you in from everywhere. No, somebody touched me. And I'm going to go to J. Iris's position right here. I'm going to go and put myself and dramatize this for you. That's just great. That's just great. Here I have, I was first in line. You know what it's like to be first in line and somebody cuts? Man, that ain't funny. Here I was. I was first in line. I even got at his feet and I said, Lord, heal my daughter. I need a healing today. And he got pushed away and she come and cut right in front of me and took my healing. Man, I needed that healing. My daughter is dying. I needed that healing and she come and took it away from me. The mentality that the world has in a lot of fashions is that God ain't got but one healing. And if he spends it on somebody else, then what am I going to do? And I could just see him saying, oh great, there goes my healing. My daughter's dying. She snatches that. Why didn't I think of that? I could have just touched him and I didn't do it. Man, I can't stand that girl. I mean, I can just, I can just imagine this emotions. But then this poor guy's situation goes from bad to worse. All of a sudden, in comes somebody else and says, don't be bothering the Lord. Don't bother the Master. Your daughter's died. She, she's passed away. It's done. It's finished. Just, just leave him alone. It's over. So I can imagine he's at this point just about like this widowed mother that's having to be held up in the other funeral. He's just about the life has been zapped from him. He has no strength. He has no ability to even think for himself. Verse 49. Let's read it just so you don't miss it. Somebody walks up and says, hey, let me tell you what. Oh, I'm sorry. While Jesus was still speaking, someone comes up from the house of Jairus in the synagogue of uh, the rumor, your daughter's dead. Don't be bothering the master. Don't bother the teacher anymore. She's dead. It's over with. Now we've got to go plan the funeral. You need to start thinking about funeral preparations and stop bothering Jesus is what you need to do. But let me tell you something. What they saw as funeral preparations... Jesus saw his dead girl rising. Jesus saw somebody getting up. Jesus didn't see it the way they saw it. Now, this is what I wanted. I deliberately made this shorter today because I knew we had some things going on. I want to start bringing this thing home. 
I want us to see what's going on here. I want us to break it down and look at it for ourselves. Verses 51 through 55. I want you to read it with me. I love this stuff. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, got a dead girl there now, he did not let anyone go in with him except for Peter and John and James and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning. This is awful. Oh, my God, the baby, oh, I knew the kid, you know, she used to come and give me, you know, she, she'd come and bring me flowers at my stand and stuff. And, and Jesus says, you need to stop your wailing. She's not dead, but she's asleep. And this, do, are we guilty of this? Then they laughed at him and scorned him. She, that, knowing that she was dead, we saw her dead. She's dead. She's cold. You know how long it took you to get here? We saw the color change. We saw her get cold. She's starting to get stiff by now. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned to her, and at once she stood up, and Jesus told them to give her something to eat. So let me tell you something. Let me break this thing down. I love this. I'm going to choose of all these people. All these people standing around, I'm going, get, I'm going to get five people. I want Peter, I want you to go in this room with me. James, you and John, you guys come in this room with me. And mother and father, stop crying. I, I want you to go in this room with me. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. Because I want you to go in this room with me. And I can just see these people say, what in the world? You know, we want to talk. What, what's he think? What's he doing? Well, I'm going to go in there and see what's going on for myself. And I just say, Jesus, I love this. You don't get to go. You don't get to go. These five people I've chosen to go with me because they don't doubt. These people don't have a spirit of doubt. These people don't have a spirit of negativity. These people want to see this move of the Lord. You don't want to see. You want to plan a funeral. So you don't get to go. And not only that, he kicked them out. He said, get out of here. Go outside. And let me tell you something. When people come into your life and start telling you, oh, it can't be done, you say, you get somewhere else because I'm going to find me somebody that says, it can't be done. I'm going to find me a James and a John and a Peter. And I'm going to find me a mama. Don't you think that mama wasn't going to say whatever? If you say it so, I want my daughter to be it. Walking and talking in my arms about it. I can't stand it. And that father was the same way. If you say it, I'm going in thinking it's going to happen. I'm going in seeing it happen. What they saw is a dead kid laying in a bed. Jesus saw as a dead kid rising. Yeah. Jesus don't see things the way we do. Right. Now let me ask this question. I want to make a, 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 a an analogy here. I want I want to 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 ask the question. In May 2013, Tina and I came to this church to interview to become the pastor. Not the first time, but the time we sit right up there in that foyer. If you were in that meeting, I want you to stand up. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Five, because we're counting them as a team. Give me five people. Thank you. Give me five people. Yeah. Give me five people. Give me five people who refuse to see a dead kid. Right. Give me five people who refuse to see a dead kid, and I'll show you a dead kid rising. Give me five people who refuse to see a dead church, and I'll show you a church that's alive. Thank you, my are the rock of this church. You are the pillar of this church. And somebody somebody said, I refuse to believe what the world and, the, and my community is telling me. You've got way too much debt. You've got way too much building. You've got way too little people. I refuse. Give me five people. And right there's your five. And let me tell you something. Jesus chose five and there was probably the only five. Give me five and we'll see something happen. Give me five people that refuse to see to, to plan a, a, a funeral for a church. You know how you plan a funeral for the church? You put you put a sign on the door that says services are, are, are suspended. And then you go to the realtor and then you start putting it on the market. And then you start praying, Lord, don't let us have to pay any more out of our pocket. That's how you start planning a, the funeral of a church. Give me five people who says, I'm not planning the funeral of a church. 
I'm not going to do that. I, well, you know what I see? I see five people that says, I see a live church rising is what I see. That's exactly what I see. Give me five people who believe. Give me five people in this room who believe, and I'll show you a thousand dead men, dead men rising. We will see a thousand dead men rising. If there's five people that can stand and say, I am about the Lord and I have no doubts whatsoever. We've got... We, we, Kathy's got to go this week. And you know what? Give me five people that says we're going to get a good report. Give me five people that says I'm going to back in the world for anything. I'm going to let God come into my mind. I'm going to call these things that are known as though they were. We've got an appointment tomorrow. Miss Rosie Byron got an appointment tomorrow. Give me five people that says I expect a good, a good report. Worship me, come on back up. I appreciate it. <laughs> Give me five people. Give me five people, and I'll show you a God that wants to ruin a funeral. We ain't got time to plan funerals. We don't have time for that. Give me five people that says, when your heart stops beating, give me five people that says, no, it ain't something. And I'll show you one that's going to put stuff on Facebook and don't go to church with me. Let me tell you something right here. I said, God's going to give you a good report because you're more concerned with Miss Rosie than you are with yourself. And I can bet you the money right now that I have in my pocket that that's the truth. Belinda Maynard said this Wednesday night in Bible study, dead can't stay dead around the Lord. Dead can't stay dead around the Lord, people. And I'm telling you, dead's not going to stay dead. It's not going to happen. It is our responsibility to bring our situations to the Lord. It's our responsibility to say, Lord, I'm not going to accept this. Dead can't stay dead around the Lord. I want to jump back to this very first uh, funeral where they're carrying this young fella out. I don't know, I preached this a long time ago. So one thing that stood out to me. They're carrying this guy. They're moving this guy out to be buried. His, his, his coffin, his mat, whatever they've got him on, the funeral possession, you know what? Be respectful. Don't, man, don't, don't be, you know, don't be heckling. You know, they say it's a sign of a redneck if you, you know, if you heckle during a, during a, a funeral possession. Don't stop the funeral possession, but see, Jesus don't see things like I see things. Jesus says, hey, hang on just a minute. Whoa, hey, hey, come here. Bring that fellow over to me. See, here's the thing. They stopped. Who stops when somebody says, hey, stop. Do you think if I'm driving across town tomorrow and there's a funeral possession coming, pulling out a hundred funeral home, coming this way, do you think if I pull up in my, in my truck, put it in park and start doing, hey, oh, stop, stop. I got to lay hands on this guy. Do you think they're going to put me in jail? Do you think they're going to think I'm crazy? Because I'm going to think I'm crazy. They're going to, they're not going to stop for me. What funeral possession stops when somebody says stop? But when God says stop, it stops. Jesus says, hey, hang on just a minute. I've got to bring this old boy back. I've got to bring this old boy back. I'm not finished with this guy. Look at this widow woman. Honey, get up. You're going to go home with your son today. And when he gets up, he's going to be jabbering or talking like you ain't never heard. He's going to get up from there, but the funeral stop. Your situation, I promise you right now, it's not out of control. It's not beyond God. Your situation is not going in high gear in the wrong direction. Your situation is not too far gone, and it's not a lost cause, and you are not unloved, and you are not unwanted, and you are not unneeded. You are definitely special and powerful to the Lord and your days are not finished. You have got a work to do and God has put you here with us and let's do it together. We're going to move forward. It's just like bringing this referendum this, this, to, to our attention. We said in the beginning, we're just not going to come here to get our fix and move on. We're going to try our best to make a difference. And if I upset somebody because 
these situations. We, we've got situations right here at this morning. This morning. Many, all, all morning long. God is, God is up to something. He's a good God. He's faithful. We've got, we just, we just, you know, we just may need some guidance. We may need some clarity. We may, we, you know, in, in my terms, Lord, I just need you to ride on the roadside. Just do that for me. He's never done it for me, so it requires me to implement my faith in today. But I'm going to tell you something. We need a healing touch this week. We need good reports this week.